Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting game of Bigger Bible Books! The fun and exciting game where you, the audience, must quickly decide by looking at two books of the Bible which book you think is bigger. That is, which book has the most chapters. When you think you know the answer, shout out the name of the book and hold up one hand for book number one and two hands for book number two. Choose carefully, though. Select the correct book and you're still in the game. Select the wrong book and you can keep playing, but please take a seat. If you are still standing after all eight questions, you will have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion. Everybody, on your feet. It's time to play Bigger Bible Books. Which book is bigger, Psalms or Jude? Time's up! Psalms is the bigger book with 150 chapters. Jude has only one. Now, which book is bigger, Matthew or Joel? Time's up! Matthew is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Joel has only three. Which of these books is bigger? First Samuel or First John? Time's up! First Samuel is bigger because it has 31 chapters. First John has only five. Nice job if you got all three of those right. Now, which of these books is bigger? Obadiah or Genesis? Time's up! Genesis is the bigger book with 50 chapters. Obadiah has only one. Which of these books do you think is bigger? Ruth or Proverbs? Time's up! Proverbs is bigger because it has 31 chapters. Ruth has only four. Excellent work if you're still standing. You really know your books of the Bible. Now, which of these books is bigger? Acts or Third John? Time's up! Acts is the bigger book with 28 chapters. Third John has only one. These last two questions are going to get a little tougher now. Which of these books is bigger? Luke or Esther? Time's up! Luke is the bigger book with 24 chapters. Esther has only 10. Final question! Which of these two books do you think is bigger? Second Samuel or Job? Time's up! Job is bigger because it has 42 chapters. Second Samuel has only 24. Congratulations! If you got all eight questions right, that is very impressive. You have earned the title of Bigger Bible Books Champion! Thanks for playing, everyone! Feel the wonder, say his name Watch the darkness slip away Put your power on display Say goodbye to fear and shame
alive with you I'm feeling so alive with you You're making all things brand new So crazy to believe that Nothing's ever gonna come between All the love that you have for me It's a new day And I'm feeling so alive with you I'm feeling so alive with you of God, sons of God, we're here for another power pack teaching this morning. I am so fired up because I'm sitting there like when the juice is good, that's when you know that you're going to get some good word out of there. So let's go right now. We're here to talk about the communion table. And you might be saying, Sister Lillian, okay, we know about communion. Why are we going to do a whole teaching about communion? Well, you need to understand some stuff. When you talk about the communion table, it's a table where Father God died for you to have every good thing on this earth. Because he sacrificed his life for you through Jesus Christ, you get to walk in victory and supernatural um, uh, authority in every situation, all because he did something. See, a lot of times I sit there and talk to people and they don't understand the reason why you need to be aggressive about the things of Father God is because you don't realize how much someone gave up for you. When you realize how much Jesus gave up for you, you it totally transforms your thinking. You will make every second count all because of you knew what somebody else gave up for you. Well, on the community table, Jesus literally laid down his life so you can enjoy every good thing on this earth. And that's why it's so valuable to know. Kings and queens, you know what you have the armor on? It's because you need to know how to fight. You might be thinking, oh, Sister Lenny, I'm in my bedroom or I'm reading. It's no big deal, but it is a big deal. Every moment you go, oh, you breathing, you're in a war. There's two families. There's Father God and that stank dog, the devil. And you need to understand whose family you're on. When you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you became victorious. 
all powerful because Father God in you, helping you in every situation. You get to do things, extraordinary things that other people only look at and be like, wow. That's the kind of person you are. That's how he made you when you said, I give my life to you, Jesus. And then there's that loser side, that punk, that bum. He's on the losing table and he wants to say, I'm, I want to take your life the greatness of you and sap it from you. And your job is to say, no, I'm going to feed on the word day and night from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep. I'm going to think, listen to, hearken to the word of Father God and then do the word I know. You have to make that choice. All I can do is teach you. You have to say, dad, it's you and me forever. And when you have that kind of attitude, you say, this time of teaching, I'm going to push everything aside. I'm going to get my Bible and paper and pen down so I can wipe down revelation knowledge and wisdom and insight because dad is always talking to you. He's always trying to find a way to get you around the nuances and the traps of the enemy and the lies and deceptions. Because when you know the truth, it automatically dissipates every lie and deception. But you have to know it first. So right now, I want you to have that paper and pen out and receive the word of Father God. And you say, Cecilia, okay, I'm watching you. I'm listening to you. But it's more about that. You have to have your eyes focused, put down all distractions, keep your heart and your ears attentive to the word of God. So when that revelation nugget, when that wisdom flows, you grab it and you write it down and you say, that's me. And you agree with it. Time to download that word. Do you know every single time you feed on the word of Father God, you grow in knowledge? And Father God said grace and peace is multiplied to you according to the knowledge that you have. So every time you hear the word through your men and women of God who, uh, who Father God sent to your life, and every time you feed on the word of God through audio or visual, however it is, you're growing. You're growing exponentially into more and more of the greatness of Father God so you can bring him exceeding fruit. But it's a choice you have to make. You have to choose to hear that word, not be looking someplace else, not tuning your nails or digging your ears. You have to be focused on the word of Father God so you can grow mightily. You see that Bible going into the heart? That's you. You can make a choice right now to take the words I'm speaking to you and line up with the word of Father God and say, I'm going to hide that word in my heart. And all the words that you hide in your heart, you're training yourself to rule and reign in righteousness. My big brother paid a high price for you to live in glory. In order for you to live in glory, you have to agree with the words of Father God that you hear and are focused on and that you hide in your heart. And every time you hide that word in your heart, the light and life and gloriousness of that Father God, of Father God's word starts changing you and transforming you into more and more of the very image of him. So he, you're now his hands and feet everywhere you go. It's a choice you make. I've made my choice. Me, Daddy, Jesus, Holy Spirit, all the angels, we cool. We walk in this earth. Now you have to make that same choice too. Let's pray. Dad, you are precious. And I'm so grateful for your precious presence in my life. Because of your deep and dear love towards me, we get to know more and more of your great goodness in the land of the living. Because of you, Dad, and you only, we get to understand revelation knowledge and wisdom and insight. Thank you for the words of light and life coming through me, flowing into their ears. And I thank you, Father, that our ears are open and attentive to your word to hear and then do it. And we appreciate you for all your great goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you see them looking crazy. Do you see how they're looking all sad and depressed? That's because they made a stupid choice. Adam and Eve sat there and listened to the bum, the punk, the little weasel loser, and didn't listen to Father God. Father God gave them one instruction. Do not touch that tree. And you know what they did? They listened to the punk. And the punk said, oh, you're not going to die if you touch that tree. And do you know what he listened to? The wrong person. And it unzipped all curses, sin, sickness, death, disease, every form of bad you could possibly think of, and all the nuances of that mess came crazily into our lives, all because of one choice. That's why it's so important of your choices. It's so important every single day that you make every good choice from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, your choices are built to only feed you and grow you, not make you go backwards. Well, Adam and Eve made the stupidest choice. They chose to listen to the devil, our enemy, our adversary, they're to listen to Father God. And because they did that, we were lost. 
I'm talking gone, destined for hell on earth and in actual hell for all eternity because of a stupid choice. One, they thought they knew better. They said, oh, I don't have to listen to my authority figure, to the one who created me. They thought they knew better. And death spread throughout all the earth, all because of a choice. Now, we says, no, we're, we say we're not going to act like uh, Adam and Eve. We're going to make a good choice. We're going to choose to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and every single day walk and talk with him and like him. And when we make that choice, we have light and life spread throughout into the entire earth because we make a choice, one choice. See, when Adam and Eve made that bad choice to let all that craziness mess come into our lives, now there had to be a covering for sin. There had to be something to say, hey, there's atonement. Me, me, Father God, we still cool, aren't we? And Father God said, yeah, we cool if there's a spill in the blood. And right now, our brother, our Jewish brothers and sisters, they gave the blood of animals as a sacrifice. That bad choice of Adam had now be covered with the blood of Jesus. You see what the scripture says? Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. They had to be forgiven for making that bad choice against Father God and for the enemy. And when you think about that, you say, well, why would blood use? Because there's life in the blood. The life that's in the blood covered the death that was added to or allowed to come into the earth. Jesus bought us a brand new covenant. And the reason why I can show you this, you know, it's like, how, okay, Sister Line got bad, okay. Adam and Eve screwed up. Jesus came back, brought us a new covenant. Well, what's the community table have to do with that? It makes a big difference. It makes a di big difference on you remembering what was sacrificed for you. Let me give you an example. Um, Ethan, my son, was in the AAU game. He's my second son. Um, he was in the AAU game. He went up. He was gone for the basket. He was gone. And this big dude, 6'6", 200-pound dude, now he loved he 45, but he supposed to be on the AAU team. He supposed to be 17 U. I'm like, okay, cool. He goes up, and Ethan goes up and dunks on him. I'm like, my boy, my boy. But the dude was mad and, uh, and hit into his body, and it popped his shoulder out. I'm like, foul, 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 foul. I was all up in it. I was just loud. Foul. Well, he was on there, and I said, hold name Jesus, hold on Jesus. He got up, he was fine. But then he said, after a day or two, it was still sore. And I said, son, say your holy name of Jesus. As Jesus' shoulder is, so is yours. He's like, holy name of Jesus. I said, I can look at you, and hearing your words, you got no faith. See, it's what you believe when you speak the words that make all the difference. Every time you speak words, they're locked with something. They're either faith or fear. And you're either saying one or the other. So in this particular situation, I'm saying, dude, you're holy in the name of Jesus. You're the healer of the Lord, and the enemy will try to attack you with this situation. So all you do is say, I'm the healer of the Lord, and the healing manifest that's in you will come up and minister to that he shoulder. Well, my son was like, yeah. He had that kind of attitude. And that's what I'm saying about the, uh, the uh, communion table. Our Lord and Savior bought a brand new covenant with his body and his blood. And you, at the communion table, every time you partake of communion, believe that with his body and his blood, that he took all sin and sickness and, and disease into his body. And with his blood, he wiped your slate clean. So Father God, when he looks at you, he looks at you like he sees Jesus. Clean, clear, holy, sanctified, pure, whole, glorious. That's how he sees you right now. He says, Sister Lillian, I'm sitting here just chilling in my pajamas. Yup, he sees you just like he sees Jesus. And when you understand the sacrifice of the communion bread, then you act differently. You're like, wait a minute. I won't allow this illegal mess to operate in my body. I'm the whole of the Lord. I won't sit there and walk like I don't know what I'm doing. I have the wisdom of Father God that's been given to me through the mind of Christ. I'm not going to walk around here in poverty. What? I'm the richest and wisest being on the face of this earth. You operate different when you realize the sacrifice that was given for you. And that's the difference in the communion table. Communion, you remind yourself to say, Jesus, you bought and paid with your body, your blood, this great victory for me. And I remember it and I thank you for it. And that's what he did. Okay. Now, I know I could talk and talk, but you know I like visuals. Check out this video. Have you ever wondered why every once in a while at church people eat a small piece of bread and drink a tiny bit of juice? Is it just snack time or is there more to it than that? Well, this has a lot of different names, but for today, we'll call it communion. And communion is something that the church has done for thousands of years. But what exactly is communion? Why do we do it? 
To answer that, we should look all the way back at the very first communion. Before Jesus went to the cross, he had one last meal with his disciples. While they were all there, Jesus took a cup and told his disciples to divide it among themselves. Then he broke up some bread into smaller pieces and gave a piece to each of his disciples. When Jesus had them all take and eat the bread, he said, this is my body. The bread represented his body that would be broken. When they all took the cup, Jesus told them, this is my blood. The cup represented his blood that was going to be poured out as a sacrifice for them on the cross. When they ate the bread and drank the cup, he told his disciples, do this in remembrance of me. This is why we take communion, to remember Jesus and what he did for us. The bread and the cup are physical symbols that Jesus gave us to remind ourselves of something much bigger that he did for us. So let's talk about the bread for a second. This isn't the first time that Jesus compared himself to bread. In John 6, 48, he said, I am the bread of life. What he meant by that was, just like our physical bodies need food to stay alive, our spirits need food too. Otherwise, they'll starve. When we eat the bread, we should remember that just like physical food sustains our physical lives, Jesus sustains us spiritually. Without Jesus, our spiritual bread, we would starve. Also, just like the bread that he broke and handed to his disciples, his body was about to be broken. Because Jesus' body was broken, they could be made whole. The same is true for us. When we eat the bread, we should remember that Jesus' body was broken the day he went to the cross. Because of that, we can have healing, not just physical healing, but emotional healing and spiritual healing as well. Jesus was broken, just like the bread, so that we could be made whole. Now, let's talk about that cup. Back before Jesus came to earth, when people sinned, the only way to be right with God was to sacrifice an animal that had no imperfections. That may sound kind of weird, but that's how seriously God views sin. The Bible says that the cost of sin is death. So every time they sinned, they had to sacrifice another animal, and even still, they weren't changed on the inside. But all of those sacrifices with their emphasis on blood were a picture of the real sacrifice that would be coming and would change people from the inside. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus was that perfect sacrifice. When we drink the cup, we should remember that it is only because of Jesus' blood that we are able to be born again into God's family. Without Jesus' sacrifice, we would be doomed to be separated from God forever because of our sin. So the bread and the cup are just a physical way to remind us of the amazing thing that Jesus did for us. First and foremost, communion is a time to remember. Remember what Jesus did for you. Remember that only he can sustain you spiritually and that his body was broken so that you could be made whole. Also, remember that his blood was spilled to pay the price for your sins so that you could be a part of God's family. Communion is also a time to examine ourselves. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11:28 28 that we should examine ourselves before we take communion. Communion's a serious deal. We need to take it with the right attitude. This is a good time to ask yourself questions like, is there something that I need to ask forgiveness for? If so, now's the time to do that. Or maybe ask yourself, am I living a life that brings honor to the broken body and the blood that Jesus spilled for me? If not, take the time to ask forgiveness and commit to living a life that brings honor to Jesus before taking communion. Communion is a great time to examine ourselves. Lastly, communion is a time for community. A lot of times when we take communion, we use pre-prepared, already broken up pieces of bread rather than using one singular loaf of bread that we split up. So it's easy to forget the significance of the picture that we are all a part of one body, the body of Christ. Because Christ's body was broken, we can all be united in that one body, no matter who we are, young or old, big or small, rich or poor. If we've made Jesus our Lord, we are bound together as one body. It's the broken body and the blood of Jesus that binds us together as a family. So communion is a time to remember what Jesus did for us. It's a time to examine ourselves on whether we're living a life that honors Jesus or not. And it's a time for community. Remember that no matter what background you come from, when we're a part of God's family, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus gave his life for us. Period. That's it. When you know somebody give their whole life for you, your whole life should change. They sacrifice so much so I can be extraordinary. Will I be anything less than extraordinary? Duh, no. When you realize in the Old Testament, the Passover lamb was, blood was given to cover over sins. 
Jesus' blood was given to eradicate it. You see a difference? The Passover lamb was given and he stayed dead. That lamb was killed, the blood was shed, he was dead. He didn't get up and say, oh, okay. No, he was dead, no longer alive. Jesus died, spilled his blood on our behalf. Father God forgave us and then he rose again after three days with all power in his hand, whooping the devil's behind. And then he transferred that victory unto us. That's the difference of the Old te uh, te uh, Covenant Testament and the New Testament and New Covenant. I love this picture. When Jesus comes out, he's running. He's running, because that's how passionate he is. I've done my time. I've taken the place of my little sisters and my little brothers, and now I've given them victory, and he came out ferocious, a conquering king. He smashed the enemy. You know when I watch, um, I like when Hulk smash. I'm, I'm all, I see everything through the eyes of Father God. I try to see everything I possibly can through the eyes of God. So when I see Hulk movies, Hulk smash, I think Jesus smashed, smashed the enemies behind. And that's what he literally did. He smashed him. He decimated him. He removed all power of influence over you unless you believe it, unless you believe the lies and deception of the enemy. He smashed him. He conquered the grave. Jesus not only conquered the uh, conquered, um sickness and disease and every bad thing. He conquered sin itself. Do you know something people say, oh, sin is just a small word, but it has serious ramifications. And you have to understand that every single time sin is, is, is somewhere found, there's some form of death. The wages of sin is death. If you make a bad choice, there are consequences for your choice. Your job is to game the system of life. Your job is to look at life and say, I'm going to make as many wise choices as I possibly can, as many good and godly choices as I possibly can. And every time I make a good and godly choice, you have ramifications. That's fruitfulness and multiplication and addition. But every time you make a bad choice, like Adam and Eve did for all of us, because your choices do impact generations. You might say, Sister Lily, I'm, I'm the only person in my family. And you make bad choices. It can impact your parents, your grandparents, your aunts, uncles. If you have a whole bunch of siblings, then it impacts each one of your siblings. You, you, you act crazy. It could have a, 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 all kinds of ramifications to your life and everybody impacts you. You matter. You're so unique and beautifully made. There's nobody else in this world like you. And Jesus died for you to be the extraordinary part, facet, uh, miracle of him on this earth. Revelation of him. You have to walk in it. You are the wise of the Lord. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and because of his body and blood, you can have the mind of him. You can think. You can see ahead. The wise see ahead and hide themselves from crazy mess. You have the wisdom of Father God so you know what to do and when to do it. All because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus conquered sickness and disease and death in his body. So whenever time you take the communion and on the communion table, you take the body, you say, no, Jesus, this is illegal to operate in my body. I don't care if you cough wrong. If your hair hurts in just one section, it's illegal to operate in your body. Pain, go, I'm healed only. Because Jesus bought and paid in his body. He took all sickness and disease into his body, became sickness and disease for you, so he bore that so you can walk free and walk in his victory, his eternal life, his healing in your body. He made a choice. This is why the communion table is so important. It reminds you of the great sacrifice that he made for you. And then you say, because of his sacrifice, I will walk different. I won't receive sickness and disease. I'll think with the mind of Christ. I'll know what to do and when to do it because of what Jesus paid for me, the highest price ever himself, because he loved you deeply and dearly. Jesus smashed all hell. He went down into hell for three days and came up the conquering king. He took over all the enemy. And now all the days of your life, the enemy's under your feet. Because remember, there was a transfer. He took all your righteousness, all your sickness, all your disease and curse, and traded you all of his righteousness, all of his healing, his holiness, and his dominion. You have authority on this earth. I don't care if you're four months old, if you're 12 years old, if you're 86 years old, you have authority. When you speak, your whole situation has to change just because you spoke. Because Father God, when he put Jesus down on earth, came up with Jesus conquering all of hell. That means all enemy, the devil, his lying words are under your feet. And it stays there because you have authority and dominion on this earth. Now exercise it. When you see something crazy going on, you speak to it. If it even looked like it's windy too much, you say, cut it out. 
you speak to it. If, if something's going on in a situation, you say, peace in this house. You speak about it and everything has to obey you because he crowned you the king. He crowned you the victory winner. He crowned you with all authority in this earth to rule and reign. And you're going to do it all because you choose to believe it. See, it's up to you whether you believe me. I believe what Father God said in this word. I've seen it too many times. You can't tell me to go back into something else. I've seen dad extraordinarily redeem me in every way, shape or form so many different times. You can't lie to me no more. So I know it. Now you have to believe what I'm saying. You have to believe the words that come out of the men and women of Father God who Father God sends to teach you the word. You have to believe it so wholeheartedly in your heart and then speak out your mouth and then operate in it. You have to. Luke 10, 19, I have given you authority to trample. That means stomp them, whoop his behind. All the snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power. Now his power is authority. His authority is lies and deception. He can lie to you all you want to, but you don't have to believe it. When you know the word of Father God and you hide in your heart, that's truth. Every truth would dissipate a lie. If you sit there, just keep your mouth quiet and say, Holy Spirit, show me. The Holy Spirit will literally show you a lie, uncover it to you, and you'll know which way to go. All because you have authority and you rule and reign on this earth. The same power that conquered the grave is in you right now. It, it, it's in you to resurrect life and light in your body. I was thinking about the shoulder with um, Ethan's shoulder was going on. I was trying to tell him, say, dude, hey, let me tell you, your shoulder is whole. What you say matters. And he was like, oh, mom. And I could hear after I kept talking to him over and over and over again, because I'm going to keep, I'm not going to shut up. But I kept talking to him over and over. He started having more and more faith. But I said, you have to believe it. I can't believe for your, well, he's the fruit of my womb. I can only believe as far as I'm your parent because the fruit of my womb is blessed. So that's a blessed shoulder, whether you believe it or not. But he had to believe for himself. So he, when he's out in college and someplace else, and something happens to him, he has the word inside him that comes up out of him. Well, Jesus bought and paid. When he conquered the grave, he bought and paid for resurrection life to be in you and flood out of you. So even when something happens to your body, it's supernaturally healed, supernaturally faster than any other person just because you're his. Because you're his, you walk in a healing that's astounding. Something happens to your leg, uh, uh, it's a shorter time than everybody else's. My son was talking to my mom, you know, my arm feels a little better. But I still took him to the sports medicine doctor. I took him to the sports medicine doctor and he was oohing on over his deltoids. Look at his muscles and look at this. And he had a little inflammation, but he was doing all this stuff like this. But he said, there's nothing wrong with him. There's no tear. There's nothing. And when my son heard that, like he had to have verification, he's like, mom, I said, I told you, you're the healed of the Lord and you were being attacked. And when somebody's attacked you, you don't sit there and say, oh, well, I'll just accept it. No, you speak up and say, no, dad made me on the communion table. He may be with his body, but heal the Lord, and I will walk in what he bought and paid for me with his life. It's what you believe that matters. You have to believe it inside your heart and then speak it out of your mouth and stay there until you see the full manifestation of it. Jesus conquered lack and poverty. He made you the richest and widest being on the face of this earth. Jesus conquered death, gave you eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life, and not just regular life, but life more abundantly. Jesus said, I have come to give you life more abundantly. We're heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ Jesus, all because of the price that Jesus paid for us. Because of Jesus, all that he has and is is ours. I was at the DMV. And they were sitting there, and, and I say this as a parent because I was at the DMV taking my oldest son, Caleb, and then Ethan, because they're my oldest too, to the, car, uh, to the DMV to get their driver's license, you know, to get both of them driver's license. And I was sitting there with their paperwork. What do you need? Car, insurance. And I realized, I said, I was acting like Father God. Whatever you need to be victorious in this life, he has and is for you. So if they needed birth certificates, social security cards, whatever it was, they needed, uh, uh, no, they provide the check. But every, the insurance card, everything else is, they ha I had, I was like, psh, psh, whipping out my bag to make sure they had. That's the same thing with Father God. Whatever you need in a particular situation and a challenge, Dad will fortify you with it. All you have to know and believe in your heart that he's with you, for you, in you, for you to be victorious every day of your life. Adam failed. Jesus fulfilled. And that's why we celebrate the, cover, the communion table. Adam failed to listen to Father God. Jesus said, I will listen to you, Father, and not only will I give myself as a sacrifice, I will empower them to be extraordinary. My little brother's systems, sisters, because I love them. He did an extraordinary exchange. He made me a covenant, everlasting partner 
with him forever. Where you go, daddy is. And wherever daddy is, is all his resources to help you to be extraordinary, to bring him great glory on this earth and to bless other people so they can know the goodness and the kindness of Father God on this earth. Our Jesus whooped the enemy. Now I'm gonna set you up right now because you know I have a visual. It's Matrix, two enemies fighting. Mr. Smith think he has won, just like Satan. He thought he was one. But Jesus came after three days, rose again with all power in his hand. And watch how the enemy realizes he was tricked. He didn't even know what hit him. And then Jesus went into hell and came out victorious. Wait till you see his visual. I was screaming, y'all. Check it out. Right here, and I'm, I'm supposed to say is something. I say everything that has a beginning has an end, Neo. What? What did I just say? Is it over? Let's pray. Dad, thank you for being with us and for us. 
thank you for Jesus' sacrifice for us. And every time we take communion, we remember that great sacrifice and justly do him the greatest good by being a great example and imitate him in our daily lives, walking, talking, acting like him, and spreading the goodness of the Lord in our lives to others. Thank you for showing us wisdom revelation. We hide this word in our heart so we can transform the lives of us and others and our generations. In Jesus' name, amen. We celebrate Jesus' sacrifice for us. It was a glorious sacrifice. Now, right now, have your communion cup with you, a piece of bread and water or grape juice to honor our Lord and Savior for his great goodness towards us. Just one minute, let me get mine. Because he loved you so much, he gave up himself. And I'm being honest, you all, when you know when somebody loves you so dearly that they gave their very best for you, it just transforms you. It really does. He took every form of bad into his body so I can walk around here healed, so you can walk around here healed and whole, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, in every way, shape, or form. Then he gave you the blood to say, hey, my blood wiped away. And as, as I'm seen in Father's eyes, as pure and holy and good, having all authority, you are too. That's what he did. So you got your communion elements? Let's begin. When he had given thanks, he broke the body and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember, I gave my body for you to walk whole, healed, partake. This is the cup of the new tech covenant. This is my blood that I've given for you. Do this in remembrance of me, partake. He did it so you could be loved and enjoy the goodness, the life, the power, the extraordinaryness of our Father in every aspect of your life. His body and his blood was given for you. That's why the communion table is so important. You know, I want you to know that how much Dad loves you is how much he showed you when he gave you Jesus. Remember that every time you take communion. If you take communion one day, once a week, once a month, or every day, remember the great sacrifice he gave for you to be victorious. And until next time, continually enjoy the goodness of Father God in the land of living. So